We are live at five. Hi, everyone. It is Monday, March 19th. I'm Paul Wontora. And I'm Beth Stevens. And we are joined by content producer Matt Roden. Hi, everybody. In a, in a jaunty hat. In a hat yeah. today. Uh, Beth, who's in the, who do we have today? Who do I get to interview? We, I'm so excited because Carvin Sassant is here from Hamilton. Yes. Very talented gentleman. Yeah, and he's about to hit the road. with. He's been in Hamilton on Broadway, but he's about to hit the road. We're going to talk to him about all of that. Uh, but first, let's do today's top five. Big news. Cynthia Nixon is running for governor of New York City, Beth. New York State, Matt? New York State. That's Beth. right. Because <laughs> we have a governor in New York State right now. It's Andrew Cuomo. But when was the last time, Paul, that we had a two-time Tony winner running for governor of New York State. That's right, never. I guess never, That's yeah, right, never. Right? That's right. So <laughs> Cynthia Nixon announced her candidacy today. She's she's always been very political. Yeah. Uh, her wife is a public school advocate, and that's, I think, how yep. they met. Uh, she put out a video, which we is love the video. pretty I love inspirational, <laughs> actually. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a political video. And so. all the gifs, gifs, however you pronounce it, of Sex in the City are going to come out on Twitter now. How does she feel about Miranda rights? Oh, wow, you've been this working on this. You've been working on the comedy for Sorry. this. Anyway. That's the news. Uh, uh, of course, what did she if you didn't Tony's know, for, Rabbit Hole, and last season for The Little Foxes. She just won a Tony. That's right, that's opposite it. Laura Linney. That she was amazing. She went from Tony to Governor Ron. And of course, she's been on the Broadway for a long time, since she was a teenager. So. This is going to be interesting, because everyone said, like, do we need celebrities to be running, you know, after Donald Trump? And But, you know, I mean, she she's definitely isn't just a celebrity. She's very outspoken. She's always been very political, like you said. Yes, so. yeah. So, anyway... I'm interested. Uh, it's really interesting. Um, we got some new casting for Hello, Dolly on the Broadway. Ellie Mozzie, Paul. Yes, yeah, so Ernestina. Uh, there, there that's was, the role, right? That's, that's the role. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Ernestina is not in the show. But um, uh, Jennifer Samard just left. We didn't know she was leaving. And all of a sudden on social media, it was like, it's Jennifer Samard's. Uh, Jennifer Samard is kind of the secret weapon at Hello, Dolly. She's the comedic. She's amazing. Hilarious. Amazing. Hilarious scenes with David Hyde Pierce and, and now with Victor Garber. Um, also a delight on Live at Five, I oh, just want to say. I mean, and, and she was a Tony nominee for Disaster That's right. That's right. a few seasons ago. Uh, anyway, she played her final mm -hmm. performance yesterday, and Ali Mozzie, who is hilarious and fantastic, is taking over the role. So congratulations, Ali. We loved Ali on Broadway. Um, she's a Glinda. She was in Wicked, in, yeah. In, in Wicked. Um, she was in Hairspray. She was Penny. Right. Right. And then she All was the in Cry roles. Baby. She had a screw, screw loose. loose. She had a screw like loose Patsy Klein baby. number. Go and look it, was, it up. It's it was so hilarious. Good. Yeah. Uh, and she's been a lot of other things off-Broadway and regionally. And congratulations. She starts tomorrow. Uh, mm -hmm. Come From Away is flying to Australia. Down Under. How Beth. clever. Oh, is that flying. your Australian accent? Yeah, that was, Australian my, accent? that was my Australian accent. <laughs> Very good. I think you're ready to go down under yourself, Matt. Um, yeah. So this is going to be in Melbourne in 2019. And uh, the production will open at, on July 20th at the Comedy Theater which is undergoing res renovations prior to the musical It's not style. a comedy, really. The it's show the is not it's a comedy. It's kind of like Beautiful, the, the Carol King musical playing at the Sondheim Theater. Not by Sondheim. <laughs> Just confuse the tourists. Anyway, no casting or additional information, but really exciting that Australia's going to get Come From Away. Yeah. Um, yeah. Legendary performer Sammy Williams uh, from A Chorus Line passed away this weekend, Paul. Yeah, Sammy Williams. Uh, now, everyone know Paul. Everyone, Paul, Paul. Oh, my God, right. I, I didn't everyone even know he did on purpose. Paul, he won a Tony Paul, Award right. in 1976 for originating the role of Paul in A Chorus Line. And, of course, Paul has the big emotional sort the of tragic yeah. of, of the show. Yeah. Um, he, he was 69 years old. He died of cancer. Um, now, it's interesting because A Chorus Line, we all know, was created because, you know, Michael Bennett got a bunch of Broadway performers in a room and sort of heard their stories. Yeah. Turns out, uh, Sammy's story is not the Paul story. That was Nicholas Dante's story, mostly, oh, the okay. co-author. But, as Beth mentioned right before we went, she said, did you know this? I'm I said, so I did know, know that. Something. Sammy is the I Can Do That story. Which that I Can Do That was inspired by his story when he watched his sister in ballet class. So that's interesting. He ended up leaving the business, becoming a florist in L.A. That's amazing. And also did a one-man show about his experiences, of course, line later on. So... Um, R.I.P. Sammy Williams. That is sad. And last but not least, uh, we got a new Hamill drop. The March Hamill drop came out this morning, and whoo, it's a doozy, Beth. Oh my God, did you watch this? Of course I did. So okay. good. Did I you mean, get? Did you get the clip? American. I'm American. <laughs> I'm also just a person, a human being that breathes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So this is, of course, Ben Platt and Lin Manuel Miranda doing a mashup of the story of tonight, and you will be found from, of course, Hamilton, Dear Evan, Dear Evan Hansen. Of course, they share a musical director and Alex Lacamoire. 
so gorgeous. It's Lynn singing, Ben singing, and Pascal and Paul are in the room, Tommy Kale's in the room, all your celebs, all crying their eyes out, I, I assume. I don't know. It's so good. It's called Found Slash Tonight. Thank you. And it is. And what are the proceeds benefit? This is important. You have oh, to I'm buy sorry. the single. The, the proceeds will benefit March for Our Lives, a planned March 24th demonstration in Washington that Saturday, led by survivors of the February 14th Florida high school shooting. Yeah. So great cause. So don't just stream it, buy it. Thank you, Paul. I'm just saying. Good point. Good point. I'm going to get out of here pretty soon. Yeah. Beth, get out of here. Thank you. <laughs> we need to find a nicer way to say that. Maybe you could think you of one. You get <laughs> out. <laughs> uh, hey, Matt, why don't you tell us more about Carvin's song? I would love to. Carvin's recently made his Broadway debut in the Tony Award winning musical Hamilton. You ever heard of that one? Uh, he's an, an award winning spoken word artist, and some, some mm. of his work can be seen in Russell Simmons' HBO special, Brave New Voices. He's a published author under Penmanship Books, and he holds an MFA in acting from Tisch, NYU. He's about to set out on a new adventure as he joins the Angelica Touring Company of Hamilton, you ever heard of that show, as Washington. And if you have questions for Carvins, which I know you do, leave them in the comments below right now, and we will get to as many as we possibly can. And now, here's Paul and Carvins. Hi, Carvin. Thank up. you for How coming you in. Of course, of course. Now, man. this is yeah, actually great. kind of a big week for you, isn't it? This is your final. This is my last week. It's your last week yeah, in Hamilton week. on Broadway. On Broadway, on Broadway. Yeah, and you've yeah. been there for how long? I've been there for about eight months. Okay. Eight months since July 11th is when okay. I started. First day, first okay. day rehearsals, yeah. And you're leaving for a good reason. Yeah. You got another gig. Yeah, another gig. Another Thank gig, God. but a similar gig. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so over um, at the Richard Rogers, mm -hmm. you are covering. T talk about what you what you do there, and you do a lot. Yeah, <laughs> you, 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 it sounds like you've been very important to the production. What, what are you Hopefully, doing? Hopefully, I pray so. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I'm one of the principal standbys for Aaron Burr, um, George Washington, and Lafayette Jefferson. So those, those are the roles I cover. Up that's there. a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just 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 three roles, four characters. Ain't, ain't and now you're going to take one of those guys, Mr. 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 George Washington. Mr. Washington. Yeah, Mr. Or Washington. Mr. The president. Yeah, yeah, it's an important role. Yeah, yeah. You're taking him on the road. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, how did you find out that was happening? And you've gone on in all these parts? Or? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I've, I've gone on quite a bit for Aaron Byrne, right. George Washington. I have not gone on gone on for Lafayette Jefferson. Okay. That, you know, it, it, it doesn't seem like it'll happen, but you never know. You mean you, like it might happen this week? You never, like, <laughs> the, the standby life is absolutely crazy. Yeah. Like, you can get a moment's notice. You can get an hour before, half hour before, five minutes before, mid-show. So, like... You, you, you just never know. Like, What's your most stressful story? When I debuted as Burr. Okay. Yeah, when I debuted as Burr. And that Burr. was when? It was, I think it was December, it was a Friday. I think it was like December 15th. I think I saw it on your Instagram. I think you were, yeah. yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. It just so happened the way like uh, rehearsals sort of went. I only got to do sort of like an understudy run, but the understudy run that I did before I debuted was like, two months before wow. and we were putting a whole bunch of new people new people into the show both on the angelica tour that i'm joining and okay. on the in the broadway company uh -huh. so there wasn't room for me to actually do a put in as burr mm -hmm. so i never really wore the costume you never had actually done the show N no wow no so yeah, how yeah. terrified were you <laughs> i was listen <laughs> I cannot even explain to you the level of fear because like as soon as you go out, it's different with Washington. Like you, you go on as Washington and like the way the show is built around Washington is that people move out of his way. Uh -huh. like, they're, like there's no traffic. Like he comes on, people right. move, right? With Burr, he's interwoven yes. into the DNA and the fabric of the whole thing. You could be bumping into people everywhere. Ever, and I was, <laughs> and I was. I mean, I didn't know where my lights were. Like, you know, you know, theoretically, like, you know, in rehearsal, they're like, hey, be on 12 or hey, be on 10. But like, if you don't know where the lights are, uh -huh. like I was like on stage and like looking around and finding oh my. my light. And I remember I was like in certain scenes and they're like, you have to cross down stage right now. <laughs> and then I'll go. <laughs> it was the, it was thrilling though. It was great. And, uh, it and was great. But were you able to scary. get people you love in the house for, to support yeah, you? Was it like a last yeah. minute? Like, come on, it, come on, get down here. I think that's what made it more stressful. I might have had like 15 people. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was like so you can get 15 tickets to Hamilton at the Absolutely drop of a minute? Absolutely not. It was, <laughs> I was pulling in all the stops. So oh. I was like, hey, you know, this person is coming from out of town, please. It wow. wasn't a drive. It was like, is that work. how you do it? You beg? You yeah, just, absolutely. Okay, it's a yeah, yeah, I beg. yeah, it's a begging thing. You gotta beg. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I beg, I beg. Uh, so Broadway is that mm -hmm. you, you went to NYU, right? I did, I did yeah, yeah. And you did, you've done a lot of theater. Did, was yeah. Broadway sort of a dream of yours? I mean, you haven't done that um, many, um, 
musical. Did a lot yeah, of plays. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Although I know you were Curtis is supposed to love me. And Dream, you were Curtis <laughs> yes, and Dream yes. Girls. I caught that. <laughs> Come on, Dream Girls. <laughs> a little Dream Girls <laughs> moment. Come on. Uh, but it was being a Broadway musical. I mean Hamilton. And I know I want to talk about your yeah. your spoken word. Yeah, si yeah. Th that side of you. It's interesting mix. You know, interesting. Yeah, fit for yeah. You. I mean, I, I sort of, I got into theater through poetry. Actually, okay. you know, and um, I had an incredible uh, mentors and people who I looked up to who sort of created their own aesthetic in terms of like hip hop theater. Right. So I sort of, you know, I, I was I was touring nationally and internationally as, as a spoken word artist. And I was a part of this program called Journal to Journey that actually um, it auditioned young poets. And basically after you audition them, they help you transform your poetry into solo shows. Hmm. So in terms of theater, like the shows that really stood out to me um, were the, so the, the, the solo show aesthetic. So like Lemon Anderson's solo show that yeah. was like over at the public that he worked on for years. Mm -hmm. And uh, a show called Words Become Flesh by Mark Bamuthi Joseph that actually was turned into a five person ensemble piece that David digs that da wow. David oh. was in that okay. I actually ended up doing that with him. Uh -huh. So yeah, so I sort of got into it by writing my own sort of work. I I didn't even know what audition. And you did was. a solo show, right? Yeah, yeah. So I did a show, so, solo show when I was about nine, eighteen. Oh wow! Um, it was called Walk. It was about my relationship, like of like masculinity and like being a first generation American and like my relationship with my dad. Uh -huh. And uh, I did that at the Hip Hop Theater Festival over at the Ohio Theater downtown. That cool. was ran by Camila Forbes, who is now the artistic director of um, the Apollo right now. So yes, yeah, so I sort of came into theater through that, and I sort of fell in love with musical theater through In the Heights. Uh huh. My senior year of high school, I, I was a part of a salsa dance team. And okay. We, we were a nonprofit and we got free tickets to go see it off Broadway at 37 Theater Arts, at 30, yeah, 37 Arts. Um, And I saw Chris Jackson and it changed my life. I mean, I, I saw wow. a black man singing sultry R&B and I thought that there was space for me. And I had seen a couple of shows before then. I had saw like Phantom of the Opera and right. things like that would give free tickets to like students. Yeah. And I was never, I was never like a musical theater buff. Mm -hmm. I, I don't really think I am. I just love theater and I love music mm -hmm. and the aesthetics blend in a way that I think are part of narratives that moved me that right. I was sort of in there. So that's how I, so yeah, Broadway is something I wanted to do, but I specifically wanted to work on something. I specifically wanted to work on Lynn's work because mm. it was it was work that changed my life. It was work that I thought fit the aesthetic in terms of how I told stories because right. I was in love with verse and I was in love with uh, R&B and I was in love with uh, the aesthetic that it, it was what spoke to me. Mm -hmm. So it was what I specifically wanted to be mm -hmm. in. Yeah. So speaking of your love of uh, spoken word and verse, I, you know, mm -hmm. I actually, when I first got to New York in the 90s, there was a real um, sort of reboot. I remember New York and yeah. Poets Cafe. Oh, I, that's my home, man. And I was there. Yeah, yeah. I went there like all the time. I yeah. fell in love with all of that. Oh, and, yeah. and I was yeah, down yeah, there yeah. in the East Village a lot oh, seeing yeah. that stuff. Mm -hmm. What, how did it, um, how did you get into it? And what about it do you think? At what point in your life, how, wh how did it sort of grab you? Well, I mean, I was, uh, you know, I'm, I'm first generation American, but both my parents are from Haiti. Right. Um, you know, so like that affected my narrative a lot because, you know, I lived in a very strict household. It was mm -hmm. very focused on education. And, you know, my parents were really like scared that I would like go out into the streets and, you know, and like become a gangster and everything. So like they really like kept me like in. So Okay, like, shout I, out to my Haitian friend Linda who also grew come up on, in a strict household. Come on, strict household. Hello households. with the Haitian and, household. Anyone know, yeah. So my dad <laughs> always was like, no, stay home. I, I, I No, you can't go out to the park. No, right? So like I always, but I always knew I had a deep expression in my heart and I didn't know how it was going to manifest. I mean, uh -huh. I sang a little bit here or there in choirs, but really um, I worked, uh, so I worked with a lot of nonprofit organizations okay. when I was in high school. I worked with this program called Urban Dove that basically taught young folks on how to become sort of community leaders. And I was a basketball hmm. coach and basically they took us on trips and they took me to a open mic as a trip wow. to this other nonprofit called Urban World NYC that I now work with. I'm a mentor there. Mm -hmm. and I, that was where I went when I was 16. So I just saw this art form where it was a mixture of both hip hop verse, but people were telling their own personal stories. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, this is what I'm going to do mm -hmm. for the rest of my life. Wow. Um, so that's how I sort of fell into it. And then I joined the organization Urban Word and, you know, they provide free workshops year round for youth of the tri-state area. And I was, yeah, man, I was, I was, I was writing, I was writing every day. I was competing. And so like I was a 2011 New Yorkian uh, poetry Grand Slam champion. So oh, like, wow. I've been going to New Yorkian oh, since 16. Wow. Shout out to Mahogany Brown. Yeah. And Jack Poetic, who like <laughs> who worked there. Yeah, so I was I was going to New York and every Wednesday, Friday uh -huh. night, Bowery Poetry Club on Tuesday night, uh, wow. Bar Thirteen. Po so like that was sort of the grind. Yeah, and I was doing that. I would perform poetry on the trains for money. 
Wow. Yeah, yeah, that's how I survived, really, because I didn't have any regular jobs. I was a full-time artist. Wow. So, yeah, it was, it was that. It was that struggle of, like, trying to survive out here, writing my own thing, and I was able to, you know, publish a book and do all that while I was a college dropout, wow. actually. And um, So, yeah. yeah you're an ambitious guy. This. Yeah, man. I was, I was young, scrappy, and hungry. Yeah, there you numbers. go. Did you also meet your wife in that scene? I did. Right? I did. Yeah, actually, she does, she does poetry too. She does. Yeah. She does. When I was, um, actually, while I was a dropout, a lot of my friends went to NYU. Some of them were at Tisch. Some of them were in Gallatin. Okay. They were like, "Hey, we need a coach for our poetry slam team because we mm. want to compete at this uh, competition called Cupsy. Mm -hmm. And Cupsy is sort of the collegiate uh, poetry slam right. sort of festival. And you said, and how many beautiful women will be there? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just sort of was like, yeah, absolutely, I'll coach your team. So, you know, I, I, I coached the team and I had amazing friends on that team, Safia, uh, Tanya Ingram, and, and they're like profound, like, profound poets and uh -huh. yeah my wife was on the university of wisconsin poetry Slam oh team, and we had a competition against each other oh yeah so we met there but when we met at the time i had a girlfriend so i was just like oh hey sis what's up mm -hmm. so then throughout the year <laughs> it worked throughout out the years throughout the years you know you do, we both are single we sort of reconnected and yeah and then we sort of hit us she's also a writer she just had a solo show that was up at the wild project theater called oh. this is how we heal so yeah so right now she's doing solo show work and fantastic yeah yeah pretty talk much. about um hashtag car wash <laughs> Well, you know, so it's pretty much like a part of the culture of Hamilton that everyone has like their own hashtag when okay. they go on. I, I don't know where it started. I don't know the genesis of it. But um, all I knew is that when I came in, they were like, oh, you, you got to have a hashtag. And I was like, OK, all right. <laughs> so pretty much you, you like take a part of the name of the character and a uh -huh. part of your own name. You put it together and you just let that sort of like love pump around yeah. sort of on, on the internet. So yeah, we were all sitting down and I think I was sitting with a, a, one of the swings named Rob Walters, uh, Greg Trico, who was the standby that I took over for, who's now um, Aaron Burr in uh -huh. Chicago. And uh, I forgot who else we were sitting there. It was like, all right, what's your hashtag gonna be? So we were thinking of things. Uh, Carve wash, wash, washings. What? And none of it was working. And then Robert Walters was like, car wash. And I was like, car wash? I was like, that sounds weird. And then <laughs> Trico was like, love it. I love it. <laughs> <We're gonna laughs> He's like, I love it. So I was like, all right. So, so I car did wash it, is hitting like, the road. Yeah, car wash is hitting the road. Car wash in your city. Hey, That's Matt, do we have any uh, questions? We do. Some good ones, too. Um, yeah. Lynn wants to know, she says, Carvins, your audition story was insane. Um, very impressed that you turned down a show. Do you want to just, do you want to tell everybody what the story is? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, I... <laughs> I mean, anyone who's been in for Hamilton, you know that they're gonna put you through the ringer, especially if they're, um, especially if you're gonna cover anything. Mm. So like you, they can let you. You gotta know. be triple talented. <laughs> they can let you yeah. know as early as the night before. Okay, we want you to come in for Mulligan, Madison, Lafayette, Jefferson, Washington, Burr, and have all this material ready. We'll see you then. <laughs> like, <laughs> so it was. It was pretty much that. I mean, originally, interestingly enough, it's the show when you go in will also. Um, shed light on how people see you. Because mm -hmm. originally when I came into the show, I was like, yeah, I think the only track I can really do here is Mulligan Madison. Really, mm -hmm. that's what I thought. I was like, I don't think I sing well enough. I don't think I move well enough to play a burr. And the, uh, my original appointment was for Hamilton and, and burr. And I was mm -hmm. like, that's weird. That does not make sense to me. So I went in maybe about four or five times like for those characters. And then they were like, ah, let's switch it up. And then I went in for Washington and Burn, did that a couple of times. And, and when I say a couple of times, it's like doing it and like praying, praying you'll hear back. You know what I right. mean? And mm -hmm. then maybe hearing back the week later, like, we'll see you again. Or maybe hearing back and being like, we don't know when we want to see you. Just, you know, just be ready. And then right. you waiting for like another month and then you wow. hearing back. So in that time, it's stressful. And it was my third year of, of, of grad school. And I'm like going through the, oh my God, how am I going to eat? How am I going to feed my wife? Yeah. Where are we going to do? And you know, you, you go through that struggle, especially because all I did was was work and all I did was produce my own work. So even going out and auditioning felt new to have to audition for someone else. So I was just really trying to figure out everything. And then, you know, they were like, all right, we want you to do a work session. And the work session is when you're sort of with the uh, creative team, you're with Patrick, who's who's incredible. He's the um, associate director mm -hmm. and he's amazing. And then you do the dance call and hopefully not mess up <laughs> trying to do all these dance moves. And then finally, uh, they told me that they would... Uh, they told me that I would go back in like in April and then I didn't hear anything pretty much for like two months. And then one random day, one random day in July, they were like, yeah, so can you come tomorrow and can we have all these things memorized? And at the time I was auditioning for another show, so I was just sort of waiting mm. to hear back. So then the next day I end up 
basically this other show I was auditioning for, I ended up finding out that I booked it sort of around noon, but then Hamilton was like, yeah, but we still want to see you come in at 4.30. Oh, wow. So then I went in at 4.30 and like I was in the room for like an hour and I was like, all right, can you sing this? All right, do wait for it, do it again. All right, um, um, can you take these adjustments? All right, step outside. And then I went outside and then, all right, can you come back in? Can you do these songs? You're like, by the way, I got another gig. <laughs> no, but they knew. So <laughs> they were like, gig, so yeah, let's so tell me knew. now. So then, yeah, so it was basically me. And then they sort of told me, unofficially yeah. told me, when I like was like sweating my like life away, <laughs> like singing, wait for it. And they were like, oh, yeah, Tommy Kale's here, so can you do all that stuff all over again oh so you can God. see it? Yeah, so it was stressful. But then, they, you know, they sort of unofficially told me, but then I sort of had that weekend to choose. And then I found out that I got Hamilton on a Monday, and then my agents were like, hey, you'll start in a couple weeks. And then I got uh, a message from Amber White, who's our production stage manager. She was like, you start tomorrow. And it's been, <laughs> it's been wow. Non it's been nonstop ever since. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. Crazy yeah, yeah. story. Yeah. Um, uh, David wants to know which Hamilton role was the most different performing as opposed to rehearsing? Huh. Well, I don't know, because as a standby, you don't really rehearse with anyone. Yeah, right. You you learn the show by yourself and you speak to the air and you you act with the air until you know you have maybe like a work through or a work session but even the person who you do the work session with won't be the person who ends up being on stage with mm. you during the debut right. so to be honest like the level of flexibility that one has to have um really taught me a lot about myself as an actor as right. a person and really taught a lot about myself as a listener so yeah, so one day I could be in rehearsal with Donald playing, you know, who's one of the understudies playing Hamilton, and then I can go on stage with Javon, who's the standby, or I, the next night Javi will be in, and I'll do it with Javi, and then Javi would leave the show, and then Michael Lawoye is there. Like I've, I think I've played with maybe like five, four wow. Hamilton. So yeah, it 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 varies, it varies, and I think that's the uh, that's the joy of it, and that's the fun of it, is that you find new things every single time. I have a yeah. very important question. Yeah, yeah. How is the development of your Haitian superhero going? <laughs> I'm, yo, I'm really trying to work Black on Panther, it. Because when you saw Black Panther, you were like, wait a minute. Yes. Wait a minute. Yes. We need a Haitian. Yeah. Su so what would the Haitian superpowers be? I don't know, but it has something, it would have to do something with healing and strength. Because okay. when I think about uh, my family, or when I just think about the Haitian culture, and I think about the resilience mm -hmm. of the people on that island in that country, beyond the fact that they were the first free black nation, you yeah. know, out of slavery, um, something that changed my life forever actually is my mother was in Haiti during the earthquake. Oh wow! And uh, we didn't hear from her for about a week. Right. So we re we thought right. she had passed on. Right. And I n I'll never forget watching the news and watching the Haitian people sing. And they had nothing, but they had everything. Mm. And there's something about uh, unstoppable resilience, a juggernaut type resilience that I think I learned from my family, um, a level of work ethic that I learned from it. And pretty much everyone in my family are nurses. So that's another reason I'm like, oh, <laughs> it has to be something with healing. If I'm like sick, my mom is like, oh, take these, take these, and take that. You'll be I good. Doing <laughs> I just want yeah. a spoken word superhero. Oh. I mean, I'm down with that. We, like we, go, that we, go, we can figure that out, too. We can that's do that cool. Too. Yeah, I'm down. yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so when do you, what's your first city on the road? This is your last week on Broadway? And then, last week on Broadway, yeah, yeah. And what city do you start in? Um, I'm in do we Denver. Know? Yeah, yeah, I'm in Denver for a week of rehearsals, but I start performances in St. Louis. I'll okay. be in St. Louis for, I think we're in St. Louis for about three weeks, and then we're in Houston at the Hobby Theater for, uh, the Hobby Center for, mm -hmm. for a month. Then we're in Atlanta at the Fox Theater. That's nice. going to be fun. Beautiful. I'm hype for, I love me some Atlanta, man. Beautiful. I'm trying to go straight to Gladys Knight's Chicken and Waffles. <laughs> um, and then we have our long sort of sit down in Washington, D.C. Oh, at beautiful. The Kennedy Center, which yeah, is going to yeah. be Great. really interesting given our yes. political climate yes. and administration, how that yeah. goes over. And then I think we're like two months in uh, at the Boston. You really got to figure it out. You memorized yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it down. You know what I'm you saying? Got, you okay. memorized <laughs> it. Car wash in your city, come through. Um, <laughs> Did you figure out how you're packing? I'm literally figuring that out, right? Like, yeah. I, I'm like this morning. I'm sure. My wife was like, you need to buy this and you need to buy this. So we just bought some new luggage and <laughs> I have no idea how I'm packing and I have way too many things. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you so much for coming thank here. It's such you, a pleasure man. to meet you. I'm it. so happy. What a great story. Yeah, thank you. I love man. hearing. And I love the show. I love the oh, show. Oh, thank was, you so much. Uh, everyone, go check check this guy out on the road in Hamilton. I know you all. Everyone's everyone's so pumped. I mean, every city you yeah, go yeah. to, yeah, yeah, people yeah. are like really pumped for this. Yeah, yeah. I'm really excited. Yeah. I'm really well, excited. Awesome. Uh, Carvin's Lassant on the road in Hamilton.
Hashtag car wash. Car wash. Mr. Matt Roden, will you take us out, please? Be happy to. You know the deal. You can watch Live at 5 every single weekday at 5 p.m. here on Broadway.com's Facebook page. And if you want a way, to, a different way to consume this show, you can subscribe to the Live at 5 podcast wherever you get your podcasts. We'll be back tomorrow with Escape to Margaritaville's Lisa Howard. That is going to be fun. Have a great Monday, everybody. Bye.